Welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts. Our weekly podcast and video show offers Shopify's ecosystem of brand owners, store developers, app providers, investors, and marketing agencies, insights from case studies and discussions with marketing and e-commerce experts. Grow faster with tips, tricks, and proven strategies and learn what's new in e-commerce digital marketing for 2022 and beyond. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify Ask the Experts. I'm your host, Marissa Morgan, and I'm also the Business Development Director here at Engage. On behalf of myself and the entire team at Engage, I'm excited to welcome you in to today's show. Today's topic is teaching you how to promote your Shopify apps and accumulate those very helpful five-star reviews. And our guest expert is a very successful Shopify app developer who's going to share some of his secrets. Before I introduce you to today's special guest, of course, a quick mention about Engage and our recent app, Engage SMS for Shopify. If you are new to e-commerce or you're new to SMS messaging, our app makes it easy for Shopify store owners to build out their customer list, promote new products, increase sales, and also create targeted personalized campaigns. Right now, we're offering a free 30-day trial with 500 free SMS messages to take for a test drive. So check us out at www.ngagge.com. That's www.engage.com. If you're a Shopify store owner, you have to give us a try. You've got nothing to lose and a huge amount of business to gain with less effort and less staff. Not to mention our app, is also the only no-code support bot app for SMS out there, so it's very easy to use and easy to integrate. Check us out at engage.com and give it a free test drive. All right, it is time for me to introduce our special guest expert today. He is joining us from Southern India in the state of Bangalore. I think that might be the furthest we've had a guest join us from, so I think that's exciting. His name is Tarang Agarwal, And if you don't know who Tarang is, you need to. Tarang is the co-founder of Side Panda, a company that helps Shopify merchants with their apps for appointment booking, deposits, and also e-signature waivers. He's got some amazing apps out there that can help you if you're a Shopify store owner. uh, Tarang is primarily an engineer and is very good at building things, if you can't tell from all the apps he has built but he also loves to be involved in the brainstorming and creative processes as well of building new ideas to develop new products. He loves to build and tinker around with new technologies. And a fun fact about Tarang, and I really want to pick his brain about this. He's a dog dad, but not just any dog. He's got a Siberian Husky. And when I think of Siberian Huskies, I think about cold weather And I think most of us do know India is a very hot place. So Tarang, welcome to today's show. Please share with me that this unique fact that you have a Siberian Husky, but you're living in a hot country. How does that work? Uh, Well, actually, you know, that's that's how it is. You know, uh, we went for, uh, you know, obviously uh, I love dogs. You know, my family love dogs. So uh, I went and, you know, we, we loved the Husky and we got him. But obviously we didn't know the fact that, uh, you know, Huskies are meant to be for cold weather. So uh, we got the Husky and, you know, we have been raising him. But the fun fact, you know, seeing that the Huskies, like any living being, you know, they have adapted to the situation. So, uh, you know, if you would think of a Siberian Husky, you know, or if you see any videos in Instagram or anywhere, you would see Huskies, you know, being fluffy, you know, uh, like, you know, cute and obviously Huskies are cute, but, uh, you know, like a ball <laughs> or, you know, they have a lot of hair. Uh, but, you know, apparently my Husky, he doesn't have that much hair. He has, he has a lot of hair, but, you know, not that much. And as a matter of fact, obviously to adapt to the, you know, the hot weather, India is definitely hot, much hotter than, you know, Siberia, if you would say. 
Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, but yeah, somehow he's managing it and somehow we are managing it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a blast, you know, having a Husky in itself is a different, uh, you know, I would say workload altogether. You know, they are smart. They are very, uh, you know, kind of active and you have to be on your toes all the time with them. Well, I'll tell you what, I think all of us have done a lot of adapting in the last couple of years, just like your Husky has to the warmer climate of India. And we've seen a huge boom in the e-commerce industry. We have seen companies make huge leaps and bounds, not only in their digital marketing campaigns, but how they're connecting with consumers. And we've seen a huge boom and growth in apps apps for e-commerce, apps that can be integrated into Shopify. Engage has an SMS app that can be integrated into Shopify to help Shopify users and store owners really be able to market best to their prospects. And that's through the SMS channel. And I'm excited to have you here. You're one of our first app developers on the series this year, and you've not developed one, but several different apps to help Shopify store owners. What have you, um, I'm gonna, we're going to dive into the conversation in just a minute, but, but before I do that, will you give us just a quick breakdown of the few different apps that you've developed for Shopify store owners? Sure, definitely. Uh, you know, so we started first with the appointment booking solution. So it was around two years back and, you know, COVID has just hit, you know, and obviously um, all the, uh, you know, stores, all the shops, like literally it was uh, not possible to go out. So everyone started, went online and, you know, that was one of the best time. And that was one of our first apps, you know, to start with. So, you know, we started with an appointment booking solution since, you know, it's a very straightforward stuff. People come in, they can book appointments or, you know, even sell services. So that was one of the things that we got with. People loved it, you know, slowly, silently, you know, we grew and, you know, people have been loving it. Then, uh, you know, a few months down the line, uh, we moved on to, so initial traction was low. So that's where we moved on to the deposit app, you know, and one thing we made sure that, you know, the apps, they kind of, uh, you know, they conjunct or, you know, they kind of work together seamlessly uh, because, you know, if you have an appointment booking solution, people want deposit. You know, if, if you are a saloon and you take a business or you have someone, you want someone to, you know, just not book like that. At least you want ah. some uh, commitment from them. Otherwise yeah. people just book and they just don't, Sure. show up so mm -hmm. you have a waste of your time so that's where the deposit app comes into play where you know you put down a deposit you know a small amount of it and that's how you carry on interestingly you know this thing has been um, you know one of the major asking from the community we when we started searching we saw that since 2015 merchants have been asking for this kind of solution and apparently you know it, it doesn't exist in shopify as well yeah. as uh, you know none of the apps were there there were some of the apps, but not exactly in the similar form. So we thought, why not, you know, uh, you know, create a solution for the same. And the third one came from, you know, one of our very good merchants. You know, we have a very good relationship with them. Uh, you know, they have both of our apps and they were like, you know, uh, we use DocuSign. We use, uh, you know, other e-signature tools, but we have nothing of, you know, such sort in Shopify, which integrates with Shopify, you know. Uh, they have to do it separate from Shopify. So that's where we started building the e-signature app. And, you know, it's it's one of the apps that apparently, again, you know, uh, if one merchant needs it, there are a lot of other merchants who might need it as well. And that's what we are seeing that, you know, it's being used by a lot of merchants. Well, congratulations on developing not one, but three successful apps. And you're here today to share some secrets about developing the apps, marketing the apps, getting those five-star reviews, because impressively, especially one of your apps has so many five-star reviews and more five-star reviews across the board with your other apps as well. So to give our audience a peek at what we're going to be talking about, if you're watching the video version of our show or listening on the podcast, I'm going to go through a couple of the insights that Tarang is going to share with us. And then we'll dive into that first uh, talking point. We're talking about how to promote your Shopify apps, accumulate those five-star reviews. And Tarang is going to first dive into the relevancy of building Shopify apps in 2022. He's going to share his experience. And if you're an app builder and you want to be building for Shopify, he's going to talk more about what to be doing in 2022. He's also going to talk about getting started, getting your first customer. He'll talk about Shopify marketplace, or marketplace excuse me, versus other marketplaces like Slack or GitHub. And he'll also talk about marketing Shopify apps as a small development company. And by that, we're talking about you, uh, Tarang, being really an indie 
app developer, being an independent, an individual, not being a huge corporation, right? That's what indie stands for when we talk about an indie app developer. Let's talk about your first insight that you really wanted to share with us. And that is, is building Shopify apps still relevant in 2022? I think I know the answer to that question, but you are our expert and I know you're going to share more about that topic. So what would you like to share with our audience on the relevancy of building Shopify apps in 2022? Definitely, you know, so, uh, you know, if there is anyone who is interested or even, you know, existing developers or existing companies, everyone has one question and even us, you know, when, when there's a new year or when things don't go right or, you know, whenever there is something else you want to do, this comes to your mind that, you know, is it still relevant? You know, should we go for this or not? Even for our business, you know, we think, is it still relevant? And specifically for Shopify apps, the market has been, uh, you know, booming since COVID. Obviously, Shopify has been booming and the app market has been booming. Secondly, the Shopify, you know, they kind of remove the revenue cut, you know, at least for the first million. And that's that's huge for, you know, any business. So after that, you know, there has been a flocking of a lot of developers and a lot of people are interested. But this question comes to everyone's mind that, you know, is the market saturated? Is the marketplace saturated? And, you know, should we build more apps? Because, you know, if you go through the app marketplace, you would see hundreds and hundreds of apps for each categories. But... I would say that, you know, it's it's still relevant to build Shopify apps. You know, there are new merchants coming in. Shopify is growing like anything. You know, there are hundreds and thousands of merchants coming every day. And, you know, they have their different needs. The current, it's, you know, it's for a business. It's not always mandatory that, you know, you might be able to cater to all the businesses, you know, all the merchants, you know. So as an app developer or as an app development company, you know, it's not necessarily that we might be able to keep, cater to all the requirements. So there are definitely merchants who would need kind of different kind of solutions. You know, you can build a product, uh, you know, you can build a product to a certain level. You cannot just build everything. You know, that's that's one of the key points. Uh, and that's one, you know, we have to keep in mind that, you know, a product can sustain up to a certain level. You cannot go on building. There are very different businesses in the world. You know, one, when we started out, we didn't know, but, you know, there are so many merchants different regions, different countries, uh, you know, they have the different requirements, language barrier. There are so many things that come into play while doing business that, you know, you always have an opportunity uh, and you can build something. And for Shopify, that opportunity is definitely there. You know, uh, it was there in 2018. It was there in 2020. It's there in 2022. And I'm pretty sure, you know, it's, it's still going to be there out there in 2024 and further on, you know, until Shopify stops growing and which I don't think so would happen since, you know, the world is moving towards online. They have already moved a lot, uh, but still, you know, uh, there is a lot of things that needs to be done or that is still remaining to be moved. I have a question for you, Tarang. How long did it take you to develop your first app, the appointment booking app? Sure. Uh, so that's a very interesting thing. You know, um, uh, I've, I've, talk, I've talked with a lot of developers and they kind of get shocked, but that was done within 10 days. You know, that was the mindset. And again, uh, the only reason being that, uh, you know, uh, I had look at different marketplaces as well. You know, there were different marketplaces. There were different apps uh, that, you know, as a development company, we built and we tried. So our mindset was very clear. Uh, you know, and this happens with a lot of developers is, you know, when you start building something, you know, you build a lot, you don't just go to the market, you build a lot, it takes three months, four months, and you lose the motivation and be like, you know, uh, this app is not doing anything for me, it's taking time for me, uh, you know, unless you get those first dollar, you know, the day you earn that first dollar is the day, you know, you get your all the motivation back and you be like, this is the thing for me, you know, and um, <laughs> until you get that, your motivation starts draining, you know, on the first day, you have 100%. On the nth day, you know, it might be 30%. And with 30%, you know, you cannot move as fast as or, you know, as in a good manner as you would do on the first day. So that was the ultimate goal that, you know, build an app, build a short app, build it within a few days, like 10 days at max, 10, 15 days, like month was a no-no. If, if an app takes a month, it's not going to be built. So that was one of the straightforward, uh, you know, kind of 
strategies. So those were some of the strategies, you know, I had to put in, you know, my team had to put in and we started, uh, you know, kind of building the app and yeah, you know, within 10 days we had given it to Shopify. Shopify has a, you know, very good uh, review system as well. Within two days, they approved it. In 12 days, we were from zero to an app in Shopify. Wow. Okay. So when did you first develop your app too? Because I know you mentioned Shopify has a review process and maybe we can talk about that in a minute. And you said you were reviewed and approved within two days. I'm wondering if now, because so many people are creating apps, if that time is a little bit backlogged, what year did you develop your app and submit it to Shopify? So it was October, 2020. That was the first, uh, you know, uh, time when we built the app yeah. October starting we started within 15th October we were live on Shopify and you know ready to help merchants wow okay so the first step is obviously building the app and your suggestion is not if if you build it they will come it's if you build it swiftly and efficiently um, and then obviously the next step is going to be to submit it to Shopify for approval you were very lucky to get approval in just two days. What would be some other things that you would suggest for getting started? I know you wanted to talk about that and getting that first customer. Any tips you'd like to also share with other app developers out there? Sure, definitely. So to get started, obviously, you know, it's Shopify has a very good documentation. You know, it's we were mind blown about the kind of documentation they had, you know, as a developer. It's very important to you know understand what the other system does because the other system is built by someone else, and you would never know you know what the other system is doing unless you have very good documentation. And Shopify has a very good documentation. Secondly, they have libraries you know you can use. So that was another reason you know the app was built so fast. Otherwise, you know you have to build those from scratch. It's like a plug and play. You know, with those libraries, you just plug it in, and things seems to work. That's it. You know, that's how simple it is sometimes, uh, you know, with, with some of the things. And obviously, if you have to build a simple app, you can definitely do that with, you know, Shopify libraries. So those are the definite things that you do get to get started. Obviously, after you have built the app, you submit it. As you mentioned earlier, you know, uh, we were lucky. Definitely, you know, uh, Shopify generally takes 7 to 14 days to review. Uh, we got in two days. Sometimes we have heard they did it in six hours as well. So again, I guess, you know, it's it's just the... Uh, you know, how how you have built it. Again, if there's a back and forth, it takes much more time. But even in one go, it just depends on the reviewer. You know, if they're doing it faster, you just get the app. So get your app reviewed. It has become harder, you know. Uh, our third app, which we built around uh, this year or so, it was much harder to get reviewed from Shopify. So even from Shopify side, they are, you know, strengthening or stricting their policies to ensure the quality apps come in. And that's another you know, bonus points that you get to know that, okay, you know, the only quality apps would come inside and not just any apps. So that's where, and to get first customer, you know, that's, that's very important. You know, we, we got our first customers, if I say, uh, you know, in three weeks, you know, that's, that's what, so three weeks we had to do, we had to do several things, you know, we had to try experiment fail, but once we got that first customer, we just started moving on. So basically, you know, uh, the best thing, Shopify has a big, big, you know, kind of uh, guideline for support. So your support has to be top notch. If your support mm -hmm. is top notch, people are going to come to you. So, you know, what we did and, you know, what we have seen uh, a lot of companies doing is they provide chat support. And not only, you know, it's probably like 24 hours. We do now, then we did not, but we provide instant chat support to them. So that's one of the things that definitely, you know, you can try to do. We posted in communities. Shopify already had, you know, appointment booking apps. So again, as anyone would say, we were another appointment booking app, you know, in that sphere. Uh, you know, why would people come to us? But we posted in the communities and people did come to us because, you know, they had problems. They were looking for solution. They were not looking for, you know, the solution that already existed. They were looking for something new and they came to us. We helped them. Uh, and that's how, you know, we also got our first review. You know, it was not um, like, you know, they just used and reviewed us. It was a very uh, kind of a rigorous process. You know, they came to our chat. We had a talk with them. They asked for a feature. We got on a call with them. Again, you know, getting on a call has a different game altogether. You know, if you can get on a call with a merchant, you can connect with them. And once you connect with them, you know, 
it's much easier to get those five star reviews because you know they they kind of know you from face to face rather than you know just a chat so that became very important and that's where we learned that it's very important for us to you know have relationship with merchants you know just not be another app which be like okay you can contact us and we give you the support or you know we just respond to your support that's it uh, that was not our motto that's where we started moving forward providing that support even today you know our our system we have a 15 minute free session for any merchants you know we we don't discriminate between paid plans free plans or any plans you know and that's one of the things that you can do as well and it's highly successful specifically for that first customer and that for that first review you can you know have a session with them help them set it up they'll be very happy and once the merchant is happy it's going to benefit your business any day fantastic great advice so posting in communities was a way that you got your app out there also having chat support and really good support in general really helps to build your app um, asking people if there were features that were missing from other apps and incorporating those features into your app exactly. and then giving 15 minute sessions, almost like, uh, coaching sessions or strategic sessions with merchants. Is that what we can call them? Maybe like strategic sessions to discuss what they need and how you can help them with your app. Definitely strategic onboarding, you know, a uh, feature session, like you could call them anything. It's different for different merchants. They have their different requirements, but the best part being they have an option to call or talk with someone on a phone or on a video, you know, just like we are doing. And it creates a different connect altogether. So very important, I think, to step away from just texting and just email and have a phone call, a phone number for any app or any, yes, any app that you're planning to promote, because it is true. Um, I actually called somebody the other day from our business line because they were interested in our app. And of course, she thought I was a spam likely calling her and it caught her off guard. But as soon as I explained who I was and where why I was calling, she was like, oh, oh, yeah, I got your email. Um, and so I do think people are almost caught off guard now when they get to talk to a real person. And so that can be something exactly. that can benefit an app. Absolutely. Um, Definitely. That's that's a very big thing. And that's another thing, you know, once an app becomes big or once the company become big, you know, they, they don't have time for that or they kind of remove it. And that's what we have seen with a lot of companies, you know, they remove the support. Uh, they have an email support, but, you know, kind of a direct support that's that's not there. And it, you know, doesn't go well with a lot of merchants. So, you know, we have kept it. We are thinking we'll keep it, you know, as long as possible, you know, as we can do. We'll have more people to handle it. But yeah, you know, this is one of the things that we would never want to go away with. And this is one of the, you know, major tips that I want to give to anyone out there who is looking to build not just Shopify, but mm -hmm. any business, you know, if, if you can provide that kind of support, the success is in your hands. Fantastic. Now, let me ask you about all these great five-star reviews, because you've got a lot of five-star reviews to your name. Do you ask are you proactive about asking for a review once you know somebody has been using the app do you have a form that you send them where you ask for a review or have these reviews been coming in um or you know just completely organically without a little nudge from you uh i would say yeah there is a nudge that is required because mm -hmm. uh, you know merchants they are busy they have their own business and uh, you know they they kind of move away with their problems like the number one thing that your app can do is just work seamlessly. And if something is working seamlessly, no one cares about it. That's that's a matter of fact. So if, if, if your app is working seamlessly, the merchant wouldn't even think about your app. That's one of the things. So you have to do a little bit of nudge. You know, you have to tell them that, you know, if you're liking the services, if you're liking the app, you know, if you could give a review, you know, some of the merchants they do give, some of them don't. But majority of the reviews that, you know, we got and what we have seen people have been getting is, you know, when you solve issues or when you help your customers, that's the best time you can ask for reviews from ah. your merchants is as soon as you help them with something, you can ask them for a review because, you know, it's it's something that you have done for them. And obviously, you know, they would be more obliged to give you a review. Secondly, over the call, you know, that's that's one of the things that we have done a lot where, you know, you help them over a call, you know, have a 15, 30 minute session, you help them and ask them for a review. Uh, since they have, you know, since they hear it from a human, this yeah. is the thing they hear it from a human. They, you know, they readily like I've seen a 90, 95 percent success of getting a review in that. 
that's fantastic too, because when you have somebody live on the phone, you can say, hey, you know, how was your experience today on a scale of one to five? Would you rate this experience a five? And would you rate our app a five? And if they just say yes, that's enough to be able to give yourself a five-star review um, or ask them obviously, or send them the link. Um, that's This is great, really good advice. I can see why you are so successful in what you're doing and have had so much success in your apps up to this date and will continue to have success moving forward. Let's chat for just a moment about the different marketplaces. There is Shopify, which is really the focus of our talk today, but there's other market marketplaces. What would you say are the big differences between developing apps for Shopify versus some of the other marketplaces? Yeah, so, you know, that stems from my experience, you know, before coming to Shopify, there are different marketplaces that we tried. And, you know, one of the major differences that we see with Shopify and other marketplaces is one, definitely the review process and the documentation. You know, that's the first thing, uh, you know, we had to talk about this you know, in, in, in our chat today is, you know, the documentation of Shopify is very good. You know, you save a lot of time there. And, uh, you know, as someone who is trying to build a business or, you know, trying to do something, trying to build something, if you are stuck in the process of understanding how to build, it takes up a lot of time. And sometimes, you know, you are not even able to build. A lot of people, they just are not able to build something. So that's one of the major differences that we have seen is, uh, you know, uh, other marketplaces, I won't mention the names specifically, but other marketplaces, the documentation is, is not, you know, so good or, you know, there are some issues here and there. While with Shopify, there wasn't any that we could find of, you know, if, if it wasn't in the documentation, it was in the community. You know, the community is also so active. The app developers out there, they are ready to help. Uh, you know, we have been part of several communities. And if you have any issues, people are there to help. Like, uh, you know, we, we were kind of, shocked or you know we were kind of we we didn't know what to say when we got replies within few hours you know that's that's not what you expect from a community that you know someone is replying to you within an hour you get a response to your queries and you know those those answers were up to the mark like you know we it resolved our issues which uh, doesn't very well often happen with developers you know you you wait out there you wait a few days you try some things and then you figure out something so that was one of the uh, biggest things out there. And secondly, the review process also, uh, you know, the guidelines are very clear. Uh, you know, they, it's very simple and straightforward that if you don't do these things, uh, your app won't be approved. If you do these things, it will be approved. So all, all the three apps, we followed the guidelines and there wasn't even one back and forth with, with the team. It was straight up approval. Well, with, you know, the other ones, we had faced some issues. One, uh, you know, one took around one and a half month. So that was, you know, one of the most off thing for us that, okay, you know, if, if we are building it within 15 days, the app review is taking one and a half months, two months is gone. So, you know, within that time, we could have experimented several things. So when you're building something, you're in the process of, you know, trying different things. You're like, it's not a cut thing that, you know, this is something. And specifically for Shopify app developers, we are not here to change the world. We are not here to, you know, build uh, something that is gonna, you know, millions of people are going to use it. That's, that's not going to be the case. Uh, we are going to build something that is going to help, you know, a small subset of users and they're going to help it in a very good manner. That's what we are here to build. So it's very important when you are trying to build those kind of stuff, you have to keep on experimenting because it's not that, you know, you will get it in the first try or, you know, you don't have that much budget that you can put in uh, as the motivation is also not there. It, it still goes on. So that becomes very important. So that was one of those factors out there. Fantastic. I keep saying fantastic, but I, all your points are just, they're right in line. They're very easy to understand. Uh, I think you've given some great tips, especially about the communities. Now, where, I know you're mentioning communities. Is there a specific place in Shopify where you find access to those communities? Definitely. So Shopify themselves have, so there are multiple communities out there and I would recommend anyone, you know, obviously looking here uh, listening to this or you know kind of building apps to get into those communities one is the shopify community itself you know it's community.shopify.com uh, that community is not only for app developers for also for merchants so you get actual merchants they come in they tell their problems and you can see you know there are thousands of posts every day from different merchants and you can see you know what merchants are having problem 
So that's one of the ways to directly connect with the merchants. So community.shopify.com is a great way to exactly. connect with merchants and other app developers. Got it. Okay. Secondly, there are Facebook and Slack communities. Uh, you know, that that is not governed by Shopify. There are, you know, uh, app developers, merchants who have, you know, started this, this community, but those communities have grown a lot. You know, they have hundreds and hundred thousands of, you know, members out there. So those communities are also very big. So there also you can find merchants as well as, you know, there are partner communities as well. You can join those, you know, people are very welcoming. You just have to mention, you know, which app you have or what you're, you don't even need to have a Shopify app in the first place. You know, you just have to mention that you're looking to build, you are looking to, you know, get help. They'll get you in. And once you are in, you know, people are going to help you and you're going to get, you know, answers very easily. And that's going to be one of the best things. Those are great insights, great insights and great examples. Thank you so much. Well, let's end our talk and spend the last few minutes talking about marketing your Shopify apps, especially as, as we call you, an indie developer or an independent app developer. Uh, what did, what did, what hard, you know, hardships did you experience? Was it pretty easy for you to market? Did you figure it out on the first try with your first app? Or did it take some trial and error to figure out exactly what worked for you? Tell us about your experience marketing your three apps. So uh, it was not easy, as I would say. And, um, you know, as developers, as uh, you would understand that we don't have, you know, a lot of expertise in marketing. You know, we are more like uh, people who like to, you know, get onto their own room, their own chair and code out from, you know, the rest of the world. Uh, you know, just go away and, you know, be in their own silos. So we are that type of people out there. Most of them, not all of them, obviously, but, uh, you know, same for me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, that type of a person. So marketing out, going to people, asking them, or, you know, branding yourself is not something that we are very good at. So that was one of the things that I learned, uh, you know, while all the process is marketing is one of the most important things that you can do in today's world. 10 to 12 years back, you needed products. You needed, you know, people would try your products. Now you are in a sea of apps and products, you know, and you are just like a drop. So you have to go to people. If people don't know you, uh, you're not going to, you know, grow your business. So marketing becomes very important as an indie developer, obviously, as a Shopify developer, as a business person, you know, it becomes very important. And in Shopify itself, they have given a great platform, the Shopify marketplace. Like, you know, if you can, so Shopify has a listing page, you know, that's that's one of the most important thing uh, where it showcases your app. Uh, you know, it showcases, like you can select the text, you can show it, showcase it to the merchant, the name of your app, what it does, a video, you know, there, there are a bunch of stuff that you can do. So if you can, you know, create that listing in a very good manner as they call keywords. You know, if you can do the SEO of that, uh, you know, page, then, you know, you are in the game itself. You know, you don't have to run ads. You don't have to go outside. You don't have to search for merchants. You don't even have to, you know, go to the merchants. They'll come to you. So that's one of the things that you have to, you know, definitely think of, uh, you know, get, I would say lessons or, you know, get, advice from experts or mentors or anyone, you know, uh, that we had mentors and they helped, you know, us. Uh, so you have to go there, ask them if everything, do the double check, triple check, you know, do it whatever number of times you can do. So that's one of the things. If you can crack that, you don't even, you know, you, you will get your first dollar for sure. You know, Shopify has a huge opportunity. Uh, secondly, once you're above that phase where, you know, the initial traction where you have, you know, a couple hundred or thousands of dollars per month, you are getting revenue from your app. That's when, you know, the next step of uh, growth becomes because you have already moved from that phase. So that's where you can invest in Shopify ads. Shopify ads are pretty simple, straightforward. You know, they are not as complex as Google ads uh, because, you know, it's, 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 a, it's not a very large marketplace. So it's pretty simple, straightforward. You run ads for your keywords, you do your bid and, you know, people can come. And merchants have been coming, you know, to the listings and they do download. So ads are relevant. Uh, you know, a lot of developers I had a talk with and, you know, they say that Shopify ads don't run. It doesn't run for some of them. It does. It did for us, you know, 
very nicely. Yeah. And we have been running it for the past eight to 10 months. And we are getting, you know, the return of invest and the ROI that you would say. So definitely you can try that once you're past that stage, obviously. And the third and the f- foremost thing, you know, and it becomes very increasingly important once you even get past that phase where you become, you know, tens and thousands of, uh, you know, dollars of business where merchants know you, people know you, everyone know you, that that's when it becomes important to build partnerships. You know, it, mm. partnerships becomes very important for any business. That's where you come in the long run because, you know, in the business world, things will not always go right. You know, there might, there will be ups and downs and that those down phases are the ones when these partnerships are going to help you because they're going to give you consistent flow, consistent revenue, you know, people are going to come in. So yes. that becomes very important. You create partnership with as many merchants, as many development companies, as many, uh, you know, app developers as possible. Once you create that, no one can, you know, uh, take you off from your journey and, you know, you would, you would move on. That's the phase we are in. We are trying to create as many partnerships as possible, you know, trying to connect with them. And it's not only that, you know, once once you create partnerships, you get to know about other businesses as well. And the the lessons that you learn from them, you know, it's in, invaluable. You know, even if you don't get any revenue, the lessons that you learn from their businesses is as valuable as, you know, getting thousands of dollars out there. And that that definitely helps your business grow. These are great insights. So first, we're using the Shopify listing page. We're basically building a listing with the right keywords. We're getting the SEO going on that page. Then we're also, once you're making money, like you said, you can go ahead and do some Shopify ads and then building partnerships. You know, that's something that we've talked about a lot at Engage and something that we're working on. So this is so unique that from one app developer on our end to another app developer, you, Maybe we have an opportunity to partnership um, and Definitely. partner. And partnerships are a great idea because you get to tap into another app developer or merchant's pool of connections, and they also get the same from you. So it's very much I scratch my back, you scratch, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. That's my back. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of the apps, I do want to share. So a Pointo is the appointment booking app from SidePanda. Depot is the deposit and split payment app, and Sign Panda is the name of the waiver with e-signature, uh, the e-signature app that Side Panda, Sign Panda, excuse me, uh, that Side Panda has uh, created. <laughs> so check those out: Appointo, Depot, and Sign Panda, and those are all from Side Panda from Terang who is our guest today. Tarang, this has been a really insightful episode of our podcast. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Before I share your contact information, are there any, uh, you know, sign, signing off words you'd like to share with our audience or things to wrap up our talk together? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you know, it's it's been great having, you know, thanks for having me on the show. And, you know, it's it's definitely wonderful to share insights and help other developers. You know, that's what that was one of the things that we got. We had mentors and they helped us. And, you know, it, it is it is one of the reasons for, you know, the small success that we have as of today. So, uh, you know, that's definitely there. So I would say, yeah, you know, there is there is no time, nothing. You know, if, if you want to do something, just go ahead. You know, if you if you think, uh, you know, if you stop or if you procrastinate, you would never be able to do that. So if you are if you are looking to build something, if you are looking to build that side business, or you know if if you are not loving your job, or even if you want to you know have an extra source of revenue, just tap into the you know Shopify marketplace, the Shopify apps, and build apps there. You know it's it's not gonna take a lot of time, and you're gonna thoroughly enjoy it. And you know you can hope to be be a big business. And once you do that, you know you you love it. You know my team, I we love our day to day jobs. We are very happy helping merchants doing every day what we love and we look to you know it's it's not only that we'll stop at three apps we are going to definitely go for more apps so yeah you know there's there's still room for everything in shopify and go ahead with it well congratulations on all your success with side panda the three apps you have running all of those great five star reviews we really appreciate you coming on the show today and of course i do want to share with our audience how they can connect with you after today's episode if you're interested in connecting with Tarang, he is on LinkedIn and you can find him by typing typing in his name, which I'll spell for you, is Tarang, T-A-R-A-N-G, last name Argarwal, A-R-G-A-R-W-A-L, right? 
And That's you right. can find him also by putting in the link that I have on the screen if you're watching the video. And if you're not watching the video, you can do a linkedin.com forward slash I N forward slash T A R A N G 88. One one. So that's how you can find him on LinkedIn. If you connect with him, always drop him a note. Let him know you saw him on the Engage Digital Marketing Podcast. Also, you can find him at www.forward.apps.shopify.com forward slash partners slash side panda. And you can do a Google search for side panda. And it does pop up with a cute little panda bear as the... Uh, logo there in the search bar. And finally, Terang has also shared his email address. Please always be respectful when utilizing the email address of our guests. And please always proceed with proper manners and etiquette. And his email is Terang, T-A-R-A-N-G, at sidepanda.com. Terang, I want to thank you so much for joining me again as our guest expert on app development. Oh, by the way, I think I spelled your name wrong when I at, was, it's a, a garwal. I actually added an extra R. So it's Tarang, T-A-R-A-N-G, and then last name, A-G-A-R-W-A-L. Want to make sure spelling is right on that. So please find Tarang, connect with him. If you have any questions, if you're an app developer, I can tell by his talk today, not only is he incredibly insightful, but obviously open to sharing all of his secrets with you. Tarang, thank you so much for being a guest today. And I wish you all the best in the future on all of your apps. Thanks, Marisa. Thank you so much. Have a great Have, day. You too, Tarang. Thank you. What a great show today, everybody. This was the first time we had an app developer come to us and share all of their secrets on their app success for Shopify. If you're an app developer, if you're thinking about creating an app, if someone shared this podcast with you and you want to continue to follow all of the great guests that Engage has on their podcast, make sure that you follow us on LinkedIn as well. You can find us via the company page, and that is N-G-A-G-G-E.com. And if you yourself are an app developer, a Shopify store owner, or looking to be a guest on our show, feel free to connect with me. I am Marissa Morgan, and you can find me at forward slash the Marissa Morgan on LinkedIn. And you can also email me at marissa.m at engage.com. And that's Marissa with two S's. Don't forget to also check out our app for SMS messaging for Shopify stores. You can find that app at engage.com. And you can also take our app for a test drive by going to engage.com, putting in any mobile phone number that is US-based and clicking the purple box that says text me where you can get a live demo of our app. And you can also click the start free trial button as well for a free trial of our app. It has been a pleasure today to talk with you all. And what an amazing guest we had joining us from India, a very successful in indie app developer. Check out Side Panda for more on his apps, Tarang Agarwal. Until next time, it has been a pleasure and I can't wait to see you on our next episode of Digital Marketing Intelligence for Shopify. Until then, keep selling and keep shopping and keep Shopifying. I'm Marissa Morgan for the Engage Digital Marketing Podcast. Ask the experts. I'll see you all next time.